Hi, my name's Jessica and I'm here for the Baby and Toddler Show Online and we've got Sam from Snooze Pod with us today. I'm laughing because every time I get a new person to interview, I always seem to have some form of the stuff. So with Snooze, I've got the Snooze Pod and the Snooze Cot. <laughs> I've got to say as well, it's snooze. Oh, snooze! Snooze, isn't snooze it? Snooze it is. Yeah. We've already had this conversation. I know, but it's fine. It's fine. It's uh, you know, we get it a lot, but it's good to point that out. I think it was one of the, the first of its kind that introduced kind of cold sleeping. Yeah. Um, where did that come from? Uh, I think as a brand throughout the the company's heritage, really, has has kind of always been all about sleep and trying to give the best environment possible for for newborns and and into toddler as well as the the company's grown. Um, and so co-sleeping really was born out of uh, guidelines from like your Lullaby Trust, NCT groups, mm. all the kind of um, midwifery organizations as well, who would suggest that mum and baby need to be in the same environment for the first six months at least, mm. but no longer in the same bed. So snooze pod was kind of the way to, to bridge that gap really and build that extension. And if you're a new mum watching this, um, is it easy enough to install or can you talk me through how you would install the snooze pod? Yeah, it's not any kind of rocket science to put together. It's it's generally a box, so a stand and a, and a bassinet on top. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. It will probably take about, I don't know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes to put together on an average. I think the record in the business is about eight minutes, 10 <laughs> minutes. Chance. So uh, we're, all, we're all in competition, so. Feel free to send them in. That'd be a um, great TikTok video, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. Send them all, see who can get the quickest time. Maybe we have a national leaderboard or something. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, so in the guide, it will tell you anyway. So part of the process is you'll measure your own mattress. Mm -hmm. And then in the guide, it will say, if your mattress height is X, then you use setting one, two, three, four, five. So it tells you really easily and straightforward how to get to the right position. So basically we're promoting that mum and baby are in the right space um, mm -hmm. as you kind of alluded to earlier so yeah really easy really straightforward you're not having to faff around and trying to find the right setting and move it up and down it will tell you based on that measurement where to build it essentially if you had any advice to give to a new mum when choosing a crib um what would that be that's a good question uh obviously just go snooze pod i think it's probably <laughs> the easy answer good answer um, yeah um i, th I think a lot of it will depend on their, their lifestyle and what they're going to need from those first six months, maybe a little bit longer. Um, the kind of house they live in, the kind of traveling they're likely to be doing if they're kind of jet setting around the world, which is brave with the newborn. <laughs> um, so I think it would be to take into account all of those things really. Uh, obviously style is quite big at the moment yeah. for everyone. We see ourselves as quite a stylish Scandi brand. So it's a wooden piece of furniture. So again, it's, it kind of has to look nice in your bedroom as well. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I think the investment would be for me, I think, look at the sleep environment. So is there loads of airflow? Is there um, loads of temperature regulation uh, benefits? Can you, um, can you test the mattress and see that it's going to give the right support? Um, as those, those essentially are going to be what baby's going to benefit from. Uh, how close are they to you? How easy are they to kind of access in the night? Yeah. So my two were both by cesarean. Uh, so obviously having the access, not that I did it, but having the access was really, uh, really easy. Um, yeah. So there are kind of all of these things uh, to look for. So and that's just actually a really good point, actually, because with cesareans, you are like the movements that like I have had friends who've had them and the movements when they've said they've had to get the babies out of the Moses basket, it's been difficult. Sure. Whereas actually that's a really good point for someone who is planning to have cesarean, that it makes it easy for the mum to recover. Yeah, absolutely. That That kind of also the the reassurance that they're close enough to yeah. to lift obviously there's still a bit of a twist in, in terms yeah. of that but it's so easy just to even just put hand on chest or yeah. uh, just have that closeness that which i think my partner certainly probably would have lost out on it is a completely yeah. different experience so when i had the moses basket with my three girls and then the snooze pod for my little boy it is it's just i don't know it just feels more magical because literally <laughs> you wake up and like you said you can just put your hand there and you can see the little faces and you can just see how they're sleeping whereas the Moses basket now looking back, but now I've got the parent guilt. I was like, I wish these would have been around 10 years ago. Um, <laughs> you know, did you notice the difference between the two from baby's point of view? Do you know what I think? Yeah, actually, looking back, I think Digby was um, always more, I don't know, just not easier, but just more settled. And I suppose, it, yeah, that would probably have been to do with him being able to see us just all the being time. Closer to yeah. You. yeah. And even, yeah, because when he wakes up, he'd see us and then he'd go back to sleep. Whereas with the girls, when they'd wake up, they'd cry. So you'd have to get out of the Moses basket, get them, feed them, put them back. Yeah, um, certainly. And you have to do that anyway. You've got to feed them. Yeah, you do have to feed them. <laughs> we'll say that. Every two hours. Yeah, say that out loud. Um, but that was the same with my son. Uh, he, if he, if he was overstimulated, 
or well, not overstimulated, but w woke up and then it would take a fee to get him back to sleep. Yeah. And then it could be two, three hours sometimes, isn't it? Whereas a quick hand on chest sometimes is like, yeah, done Just 10 minutes. Sleep, yeah. <laughs> and the snooze pod rocks as well. So sometimes a kind of lazy arm, which can rock yeah. uh, them back to sleep, uh, again, is a, is a benefit that you can either have on or off. Oh, well, Sam, <laughs> thank you so much for coming in. Sam is all about the snooze pod and the, sno uh, the cot bed, the snooze cot. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. No problem. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having me. <laughs>